So what we're going to cover today is how I fish in Limber Creek, both land-based and via boat. So we'll cover where Limber Creek is, what it's like to fish, what fish you'll find there, and the gear to use. To get to Limber Creek, travel north on the highway out of Brisbane, and just as you get out of Brisbane, you follow the signs that say Torbal or Meldale. They're the two boat ramps, and that's what we'll cover today. This first map we've got on screen, you can see here, it's a bit of an overview of where Limber Creek is in relation to Bribey Island and the highway and Caboolture. Um, it's not very far, as you can see from Caboolture, it's probably only about 20 minutes. And from Bribey, it's only across the bridge and around the corner. So in a boat, it's no time at all. You're straight across the boat, from the boat ramp at Bribey, you're straight across the Torval, and that's where the mouth starts. The first part of it, between uh, the mouth of Limber Creek and up just to the western side of Meldale, very shallow very hard to navigate in a boat especially at low tide it's actually a good time to go low tide so you can see where the little danger points are just from the western side of Meldale and further west that's where you'll find a lot of twists and turns a lot of bends a lot of deep holes a lot of uh, wood a lot of structure that'll hold your jacks and your big brim so from Meldale back to the mouth of the limber you'll find lots of shallow spots still lots of structure lots of sandbanks lots of excellent places to find your flathead and your brim and your whiting. For the land-based fishers, this next map here shows you three points you can start land-based fishing at. One's Torbal, um, along the Esplanade there, find yourself a spot, start wading, make sure you take the right boot. From Torbal, the next stop in is the boat ramp at Meldale, you can start your land-based fishing there. The third land-based spot you can have a look at, along Meldale Road as you're heading toward Meldale, you'll notice that the road and the creek get very close, in those little areas where you can pull off to the road and, um, and have a look at the creek, you'll find excellent spots along there for your brim. Just in relation to maps, how you find locations, I've mentioned three spots you can go if you're land-based. I can Trust me, there's lots and lots of spots you can go if you're land-based fishing in the, uh, the Elimba Creek area. Elimba Creek holds fish from front right at the mouth, right through as far up as you can go. So it's well worth using Google Maps or your just normal mapping, go into the satellite view and, and have a good look at all your fishing locations, but particularly at Limber Creek, you'll be very surprised what you find. For you land-based fishers and you're going to start at Torbal around the mouth of Limber Creek, it is an absolute must to have the correct footwear. Footwear! Now, stonefish probably will still go through these so I wear them but um, don't think that you're 100% protected from stonefish certainly protected from the uh, the sharp rocks and even glass and that sort of thing I've walked on all sorts of things in these and and they do okay they're just normal dive boots great for the beach great for estuary fishing and um, also great for wading these boots here rock boots now I use these rock boots pretty much everywhere don't have to use them on rock anywhere you've got a slippery surface or you need a bit tougher sole I can tell you now the spine of a, uh, a stonefish won't go through this um, or shouldn't who knows you can wear waders waders get hot um, in Queensland in the winter time waders are great yeah you've got the winter weather and, uh, and you, I can cope with waders no trouble at all through the winter but in the summertime I like good footwear now when I'm flicking for flathead and brim around the mouth of Alimba Creek, some of the gear I use here in front of me, as you can see, flathead absolutely love the Rapalas, Rapala X-Rap 8s, Rapala X-Rap 10s, two absolutely go-to lures, they come with really good hooks, so you don't really need to upgrade the hooks for flathead, um, it's, it's something that I've always got in my tackle box, the, uh, the little Rapala X-Raps. Another very good lure, if not its equivalent, is the Daiwa Double Clutch. Now, Daiwa Double Clutch has been around for a while. Um, these ones here, 90s and 70s, they'll both catch flathead. They both swim beautifully, they both cast beautifully. Very, very good lure. Fishing soft plastics, jig heads. I like the headlocks. I'm not sponsored by anybody. So, when I say these brands, don't for a second think I'm being paid to say them. I'm not. I do use these. Nobody's paying me to say headlocks. I like the headlocks and the reason I like the headlocks is the uh, ability to lock your bait or your soft plastic onto the uh, the neck of that head, uh, the neck of the uh, the hook. I really like the Z-Mans. Uh, it's probably my go-to. That there, love white, love pink on flathead. That seems to do the job 
every time I use it. Um, other lures I like, I love the paddle tails. That there you just saw with the curly tails. The, uh, the paddle tails there, three inch or three and a half inch, you'll score some really good fish on both three and three and a half inch. Chasing brim. Now, 50-50 as to whether I use bait, so an unweighted hook, bit of bait, nice and fresh or live. Throw it out to where you know those snags are, where the brim will be holding, and you'll get smashed. I know you will. But if you want to use soft plastics and hard bodies, they work too, and they work very, very well. So these lures here, now this one's a copper lure. Now, I've caught plenty of brim on this, and I catch heaps of other stuff, just about everything you can ever imagine you'll catch on this. But it's this shape and the good hooks, that's what catch fish. Now, if you haven't got access to copper lures, and you will find them, you can find them on the internet, I think. I know tackling shape that, that resembles that, and most of them do these days. Uh, this one here is a Strike Pro. Tell me what the difference is. Almost none. Strike Pros are a good lure. So that shape, a nice big bib that swims down, little tiny twitches, lots of pauses, and the brim will hit that lure. Soft plastics for brim. Now, there's a couple of different soft plastics. You can use these prawns. The prawns are excellent. These here are Eco Gear Brim Prawns. Now they don't look like much. They look like just a bit of plastic, but I can tell you they are essential. 40 mil, 50 mil, if you can find them, they're hard to find sometimes. 40 mil, 50 mil Brim Prawns, especially the 40 mil with an unweighted, or well, it's weighted, but 1 40th, uh, 1 32nd type uh, hook, and make sure your hooks are sharp. Last but certainly not least, whiting. Now, whiting, probably 80% of my whiting fishing is done with bait. Live bait, either live worms or live yabbies. Very rarely use anything else for um, uh, whiting fishing because it's so easy to go dig my worms or get my yabbies, have them alive, and there is nothing a whiting likes better than a live worm or a live yabby. That said, whiting also will take your top water baits, so your um, sugar pens. These here are a uh, Bastet sugar pen and you get them in 90s and 70s now the 90s change them down to a size 10 hook 70 I've left this one here with a 70 if you put two 10s on it it just swims a little bit with its nose up I like having the, the middle of it nose down so I just leave the bigger hook in the center here and that helps with the weight at the front I put the size 10 hook at the back now 90% of your whiting strikes will be at the back so. You jack fishos, and I know there's lots of you out there. I'm personally, I'm no expert in mangrove jack, but I do know one thing. The majority of jack that I've caught have been really high humidity days. If you go outside and you think, oh, you could cut this air with a knife, they're the days you should be down the creek looking for your jacks. That brings us to the end. Like I said, I've got absolutely no sponsors. All the stuff that I talk about, all the brands that I mention, are brands that I actually use. And there are other brands out there that are equivalent and probably better. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. It does help me when you subscribe. And if you've liked this video, give me the thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.